All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning sir. Who are online as well. All right. So before we go and get into today's class, let's just uh, quickly do a review of what we did. Uh, I know we missed, I think, what, three classes? From 15th onwards, uh, we missed three classes. But we'll try and pick up pace and see uh, as much as we can cover today. So the last class, we did uh, chapters three onwards. Uh, and we also looked at, let, let's do a quick review of chapter four, five, and six. We looked at the finished work of the cross. Uh, after the cross, what you and I as believers, the Bible says it was imputed upon us. Righteousness, justification, being blessed, victorious, all of this was given to us freely. Now it is our choice if we want to walk in it, right? The, in chapter 5, we looked at in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 says, you and I are seated with the Lord Jesus in heavenly places. Right? In the natural, we are sitting in Bangalore, India. But in the spiritual, when people are looking at us, or when the enemy looks at us, we are seated with him in heavenly places. We have the authority that he has given us. So we're in line with him in heaven. Okay, And then in chapter 6, we talked about the mystery that was revealed. Now, what was the mystery? In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the people did not know who the Messiah was. So if you read through the scriptures, Isaiah, Daniel, Jeremiah, all these prophets talked about the Messiah. Right? They talked about the man, uh, the Messiah who will come and he will save us, save the people, the Jews. And it was a mystery in the Old Covenant. But in the new covenant, the mystery has been revealed. The Lord Jesus came. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the covenant. He fulfilled all the promises. And then he took us from a place of bondage and sin to a place of freedom and a, a place of forgiveness, a place of knowing that we are his children. Right. So what was not revealed to people in the Old Testament has been revealed to us in the New Testament. That's so why the book of Hebrews says, the old covenant was glorious, but the new covenant is much more glorious, much more greater than the old covenant. Can you think of this? Right? Imagine this Moses, Elijah, Elisha, all these great men and women of God and the great things that they did. It's wonderful, right, if we read the Old Testament. But God is saying the Old Covenant was glorious, but the New Covenant is even more glorious. So you and I in the New Covenant are walking more in more glory, in more in, of the anointing than that of the Old Covenant. Now, it is there, but we have to tap into it. Right? So that's what we looked at. So today we'll start from chapter 7. And chapter 7, uh, again, in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul makes this very strong claim. He says to the believers, now you are seated, you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. And you're seated with the Lord Jesus in heavenly places. Now picture this. The Ephesians are a small group of people. Right? If you look at the study, if you look at the place of Ephesus, it was a place people were living in sin and sexual immorality. And there was too much of idol worship and everything was wrong. Living in sin. Now all of a sudden they've become believers. Paul is saying you're blessed with every blessing. You're seated with the Lord Jesus in heavenly places. Right? He goes on to pray for the believers and he says to them, once you become believers, once you are in Christ Jesus, all these blessings will follow. Okay, so there's a long passage. Is there a mic here today? The mic? Is there a mic? 
Okay, so Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Let's read that, and then we'll pick up points from this uh, passage. Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 23. Anybody can read. Go ahead. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. For this reason, because I have heard for your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the okay. knowledge, of, knowledge him. of him. Okay, let's stop at verse 17. Look at verse 17, okay? It says, Paul is saying, I, I haven't stopped praying for you, for the church. And he says, verse 17, for what is he praying for? Is he praying for healing, for sickness, for cold, cough? Or is he praying that uh, everything is comfortable in the church? What is he praying for? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. This is what he's praying for for the believers. That the God of our Father may give us the spirit of wisdom and Revelation. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. Right? Now, understand this, right? What is knowledge? We can learn many things. Acquiring, you know, studying, reading books, we can learn many things. If it is only over here, it is knowledge. Right? But wisdom is rightly using that knowledge. Example, simple example. When we were small, what were we taught? When, when there is rubbish everywhere, take it, throw it in the dustbin. We have to be clean. So that's knowledge. Now, if it is only over here, and we keep throwing things everywhere, what happens? It's, that's only knowledge. We're not walking in wisdom. It's only here. Hey, we should not play, litter the place. But we still do it. Why? Because it's only knowledge. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's just here. Why is it that so many people from other faiths, they know many things from the Bible, but they're not believers. Why? Because it's only knowledge. It hasn't turned into wisdom. Now Paul is saying, the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom. Everyone say wisdom. Wisdom is important. And revelation. What is the meaning of revelation? Revelation means when something is hidden, it is revealed. It is kept out in the open. Right? So the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That is in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So number one point. First point. God is saying, Paul is praying for the believers. He's saying that our God of our Lord Jesus may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So as believers, you and I need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Paul writes later on in the book of Corinthians, he says, the spirit of wisdom and revelation is a gift of the spirit. Right? It's a gift of the spirit. And you and I must walk in this. How many of us have made decisions and we felt, oh, this is a wrong decision? All of, most of us, right? I've made many decisions or sometimes I've said something. Oh, and I've thought, oh, I shouldn't have said this. Right? And we regret. The spirit of wisdom and revelation helps us to, you know, enduring those situations to understand what to speak, how to speak, when to speak, when not to speak, that is wisdom. And the Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom. We'll talk about that later as well. Some places 
Let's look at this example. The people tried to trap Jesus. What did he say? Should we give taxes to the Roman government? Right? The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Jewish people said, should we give taxes to the Romans? Now, if he says yes, it's a problem. They'll say, ah, oh, you're supporting the Romans. If he says no, still it's a problem. Why? Right? Say, oh, you're going against the Romans. So now they're trying to trap Jesus. What will he say? Should we give taxes? Should we not? What did Jesus say? Give me a coin. Whose face do you see on the coin? Says Caesar's face. So you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. End of story. You see the wisdom in that? The answer was not yes or no. Because if it was a yes, it's a problem. It's a no also, it's a problem. Jesus said, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. Wisdom. Right? So there will be situations in our life. We have to make the right decision. And we need the wisdom of God to make those right decisions. So Paul is praying for the believers. Give them wisdom. Give them revelation. Not just for the situations of what's happening here, but the revelation of who you are. What you did for us on the cross. Give them a revelation. Right? Now remember, these are just believers. Paul is gone. He's, he's preached the gospel. They've become believers. They don't know much. Right? They don't know about, many of them won't know about Moses and Abraham and Isaac. They may not even know. Many of them were Gentiles. Paul is saying, give them revelation that they may understand who you are and what you did for us. Right? That's his first prayer. Look at verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory in his inheritance in the saints. The eyes of our understanding. Right now, if you go down, you'll see there revelation is equal to perception and illumination. Right, perception is simply our ability to see things. Right, so, so you know, something is not there, perception is able to see things in the spirit. Right, for example, some of you want to start your own ministry, you're already seeing it in the spirit. You can see, okay, one day I will stand. One day there will be a hall. There will be 100 people in the church. This is how the church will look. This is how I will make the stage. This is how the speakers will be. This is how the worship will be. You're seeing it in your eyes. Is it there? It's not there. Nothing is there. But you're seeing it already in your eyes. Right? For example, if I tell you, close your eyes. Go back to your home. Go back to your room. You're there already. Come back. <laughs> right? How is that? It's because of our imagination, the perception, what we can see in our eyes. So Paul is saying, uh, to praying for the believers, that God will open the eyes of their understanding. Huh? Right? Not only mind, but also our eyes. That we may see what God has for his people. Right? the hope of his calling, and the riches of his glory. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us according to the working of his mighty power? Verse 20, which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand in heavenly places. Look at that. Now here he's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who raised up Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father. Verse 21. Far above principalities, power and might and dominion and every name, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Now, let's break down these verses, right? Our human body, all of us 
have seven functions. Everyone say seven functions, right? So it's there, right? First one is conscience. Conscience is a basic reasoning of knowing what is right and wrong. You don't have to be believer for that, right? Everyone know murder is wrong. Yes, you don't have to be Christian to know that. You don't have to be believer. Uh, conscience. This is right. This is wrong. All of us have it. Two is knowing. That is spiritual revelation and knowledge. Now, here comes the point where, as believers, we have to learn spiritual revelation. We talked about it, right? How God, when God is praying, Paul is praying for the believers, he's saying, give them revelation. Reveal the things of God into their spirit. When they pray, speak to them, minister to them. Let them understand the knowledge of your will. He's praying. Three is communion, worship and fellowship with God. Four is container, which is the container of life, our nature, our grace, the power and glory of God. Fifth one is our identity, who we are in Christ, what we are learning. Sixth one is action, which is believing, serving, interceding, fighting. So for example, if we know, now picture this, as a person in the army, and they've said, okay, they've put him at the border, right? In the border, and they said, you have to be alert, you're in the army. Now imagine this person, he puts on his army dress, he, he's fully, you know, he has his guns, he has everything, he's ready for battle, and he's seeing the enemy come, but he's hiding and he's getting scared or he's trying to run away. What happens? Say, hey, this person doesn't know his identity. If he knows his identity, he will put it into action. Being a person in the army, he should be willing to go and defend his people, willing to give his life because he signed up for it. Right? So just identity is not enough. Identity with action is important. So as believers, just knowing that you're a child of God is not enough. It's important, but it's not enough. You must put it into action. Right? It's like another example, right? Uh, imagine a mother. A mother has a baby, right? Baby is a small baby. The mother is telling the baby, I love this child so much. I'm willing to give my life for this child. Mother's expressing the love and affection and care for the baby. And then the baby starts crying because the baby is hungry. Imagine the mother doesn't feed the baby. So, no, no, I love you. It's okay. You, you stop crying. I love you. You're a good baby. You're a good baby. Don't cry. Is there any use? The baby will keep crying until you feed the baby expressed the concern and care and love, only then is love put into action. But if the mother keeps saying, you know, good baby, you don't cry, you know, you'll be fine after some time, it's not going to help. The baby doesn't know. So if we love, if we know our identity, then we need to put it into action. Everyone with me? Right? You understood this, right? And finally, growing. Growth is growing into Christ's likeness. Now, one of these seven functions is to grow in the knowledge. We were talking about knowledge, right? Spiritual knowledge is revelation. Now, for example, become believers and you start reading the Bible. Will we understand everything? not understand everything it's not easy to understand it it'll take time so what do we do we study we learn okay this is what the old that's what everyone have come here for to study and to learn so you read the old testament oh so this is what happened this is what god is telling the people of israel hey, you know first time when i was reading the old testament i said why is god so angry every time 
we feel that no but the more you keep reading it it's not god's anger it's the love of god it's god's mercy imagine the the israelites are saying god has brought them out of egypt they are saying no i don't want you god is giving them food no i don't want this food i'll take you to the promised land no i don't want the promised land for everything there was a reason for the israelites but god was still merciful god still took them through the promised land so our as we keep learning and growing we begin to understand who god is it's not old testament god is angry new testament god is very loving no it's the same god his mercy right the apostle paul talks about growing in the knowledge of god we know the story of apostle paul right he he saw the lord jesus then what did he do he went into arabia for 3 years he was in the desert what was he doing catching snakes what was he doing in the desert in arabia he he testifies in the book of galatians he says i went into arabia for 3 years and he was there in the desert praying and seeking god the lord jesus himself ministered to him and in the book of corinthians he writes no what i received from the lord i'm writing those great revelations that he received everything was during the time in the desert so even the lord jesus he grew in the knowledge of god now the lord jesus when he was growing up right doesn't mean he was you know he knew everything he learned the old testament scriptures he had to go he had to study he had to learn it he had to read it and then when he as he kept reading it he began to understand that the scriptures are talking about him remember he was a baby not like he was born and he knew everything no right jesus himself grew in the knowledge of god right so you and i must look at it this way one example there's a dark room okay say for example one a person is there his eyesight is very good brilliant eyesight but he goes into this dark room and he can't see anything right that's whose fault is it it's not his fault right it's because it's dark all he needs to do is switch on the light or put on some kind of light he can see now the second example would be what if a person who you know who cannot see well goes into a bright room full of led lights everywhere but he cannot see properly he's blind can he see anything yes or no can he see or no no here you got a person with perfect sight going into a dark room he can't see here you got a person who's blind going into a bright room he also can't see what does it talk about revelation is is both perception and illumination so so if you look at the example there you got understanding you got eyesight you need both one is you need the understanding of god and you need to see the things of god we cannot just have one of those two right we have to grow in both light is needed eyes also is needed yes or no right so we study god's word but we ask the holy spirit to bring illumination to bring a revelation right you are you understanding what i'm trying to say here both are two sides of a coin you have revelation you have illumination and both should be important so what must we do while praying and while seeking god while during worship ask god to minister to you ask him to open your eyes of understanding ask him to bring revelation into your spirit he will put he will deposit it into our spirit right 
Let's read Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Go ahead. Anybody can read. Colossians chapter 1, 26 and 27. The vices hidden for us and generation, but now revealed to his saints, to them God chose the weak, knowing how great amongst the gentiles are the race of, of the glory of this marriages, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. So Colossians 1, 26 says, the mystery of God's will, which was hidden from generation to generation, from ages to ages, has been revealed to us. The Bible says, in in the uh, in, in during Jesus's earthly test, uh, ministry, Jesus says, "What you have seen, your forefathers were longing to see." Jesus says that, right? Talking about himself, he says, "What you all are seeing." Right now, your forefathers, that is your Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all of them were longing to see, but they could not see. But now that I'm here, still you cannot see. So what is he trying to say? Paul is trying to say, what was hidden from them, from generations to generations, has been revealed to you and me. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come, minister to them, and go. But right now, you and I have the Holy Spirit inside us, living inside us, ministering to us 24-7. We can pray and ask God to minister to us. Right? How many times, you know, sometimes we try to pray, and we try to make a lot of effort, and we're not able to, right? I remember as a young boy I said okay became a believer I said I'm going to pray 21 days fasting and prayer I started off after two days I felt very hungry I ate and I said next 21 days I'm going to fast and pray right. so one day I went I closed the room and I said next five hours I'm going to pray close the door and I began to pray I said, God Speak to me, minister to me. I want to know you. I prayed so much, I opened my eyes, it was 10 minutes. But how will I manage five hours of prayer? Have you felt that? Huh? Prayed, 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 it's only 10 minutes. I, said, oh, I thought one hour at least will be over. You know why? Because we're praying on our natural effort. Paul is saying here, you know, when we pray in the spirit, when we depend on the Holy Spirit, time will go. You'll not think about the time. Because the Holy Spirit in us is the hope of glory. So praying for hours, it's not a big deal. Right? So sometimes what I do in the mornings is I wake up early and I begin to pray. Am I sleepy? Yes. Go, just wash my face, begin to pray. Ask God, God, speak to me. Minister to me. So I start about 3 a.m. Op open my eyes. It's 7 o'clock. How many hours? I don't know. All, we, all we're doing is, it's not about me. It's not about, okay, I have those prayer points. No, it's just praying in the spirit. Asking God to speak. Let your revelation come into our spirit. Let your knowledge come in. Now, did it happen when we just became believers? No. But over time, it will happen. We have to put in the effort. What does Paul say here? It was 27. To them God will to make known what are the riches of his glory among the Gentiles, which is in Christ Jesus, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's in us. That's the hope that we have. Right? If prayer is boring, then you've got to do something about it. 
you force yourself you say god holy spirit you pray for me you pray on my behalf help me to pray the problem is when we go in our mind in our natural thinking and, and, and say and we let our weaknesses overcome not be able to do it right it's it's not going to be easy but then christ in us hope of glory i god has revealed this truth to us by his spirit identity is an important function of the human spirit our human spirit carries identity in the spirit realm let me explain this again let's repeat that our human spirit our spirit carries identity in the spiritual realm so if you are praying you're waking up 5 a.m is that is that what time is the uh, morning prayers 5 a.m 5 30 hopefully you're like getting up at 5 30. so 5 30 you're getting up you're praying your spirit has identity in the spirit realm so the holy spirit is praying on your behalf and things are happening in your spirit right now you have a choice god is not going to wake you up shake you and say come on get up and pray it is your choice you can sleep till eight o'clock also god is not going to wake you up yes or no it's a choice it's a choice that we make here paul is saying god will reveal to them who want more of him if i want I must spend time in his presence and he will reveal more of himself to us. If I don't want, I can do everything else other than prayer, still be a good believer. But that's not what we want. Paul is saying, reveal to them. Let them grow in the knowledge and the hope of glory that is there in Christ Jesus. Amen? Right? So this is what we are in Christ. You and I must remember that our identity is there. Our spirit, our spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit in us will empower us, will strengthen us. It's not going to be easy. We must take that opportunity. We must do it. I remember when I was in Bible college, it was back, about 15 years back. I was just like you sitting here. But I remember one thing. I said, God, I'm going to do all that I can to know more of you. I don't want anything to do with wasting time. And my classmates hated me. They didn't like me. Oh, this boy is only on the books, only praying. Half an hour break, you'll see me writing. You'll see me in the corner sitting. Nobody would talk to me. I told all my friends, all my classmates, don't talk to me. They will ask permission to come and talk to me. Can, Paul, can we talk to you? I made it that way. Because I knew these two years, I wanted to give it to God. And I spent all my time just reading and praying, seeking God. Because I knew that if there's something, if God wants to use somebody, there has to be a sacrifice. There has to be a sacrifice. Everyone in the Bible calls the Bible calls students. I stayed in the hostel for some time. The Bible calls students will get up and they are all crying. Oh, same breakfast, same lunch, same dinner. I would wake up at 3 a.m. I'm on my knees praying and pray, and they would all be sleeping. They would say, "Hey, go somewhere else and pray. You're making too much sound. Or do it." They will be sleeping up to seven o'clock but i felt like sleeping too i felt tired too but i said god i need the sacrifice i want to see your holy spirit working in my life the price has to be paid amen right so i want to encourage you pay the price now when you're young I pay the price now and you will see the anointing of God following you.
right? Let's go to chapter 8. Growing in the knowledge. The Lord Jesus grew in the knowledge of God. John chapter 2 and verse 40. Let's read that. It's not in your Bible, but I just thought we can read that. John chapter 2. Sorry, I think it's Luke. I'm not sure. Luke or John? Uh, yeah, it's Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Sorry. Luke 2 40. Anyone would like to read? Forty four zero, Luke chapter two was forty. Go ahead, anybody. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Mm. I'm talking about Jesus, and the child grew in wisdom. That means what, Jesus? As a child, it was not like he knew everything. Not at all. He grew in wisdom and knowledge and revelation. Right? Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Let's read that. It's in your notes. Just read from your notes. Colossians 3, 9 and 10. Anyone would like to read? Can pass the mic to somebody else. Acquired the creation, life which is con continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you, giving you the full revelation of God. No, so so this is Colossians chapter three, verse nine and ten. It's in your notes. Oh, okay, Pastor. Do not uh, lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Right. Thank you. Right. So just as our human bodies need food, need the proteins, vitamins and everything that we need to make ourselves strong. We need to feed ourselves continually and keep growing the same way. The spirit, our spirit, needs to be fed to grow and become strong. Have you ever thought of this? You had breakfast. Most of you had breakfast, right? Will you say I had breakfast? So I don't want. I don't need lunch and dinner. Or will you eat lunch and dinner? You eat lunch and dinner. So will you say tomorrow? No, yesterday I ate. No, so now I don't need. No, you eat again. Why? Because your body needs it. Our body needs food to, to strengthen us. The same way, our spirit also needs to be fed to be, become strong. If, if we are falling into temptations very easily, now whose fault is it? We can't blame the devil. We can't say, hey, devil is tempting me. Devil, that's his work. What is our work? Feed our spirit. So the devil will come bring temptation. What do you say? Hey, I have the mind of Christ. Devil, get out of here. Get out of my mind. Get out of my thinking in Jesus' name. What are you doing? You have fed your spirit. You made your spirit strong. If I've not fed my spirit, my spirit is hungry. No word, no prayer, no worship, nothing is there. The devil will come, he'll easily come and sit. We'll easily fall, we'll easily fall into temptation. You get the difference here? One, just for our natural body, we need food. Our spiritual bodies, our spirit being needs the food of God. Prayer, reading of God's word, worship, meditating on God's word, growing in his knowledge, growing in the things of God. All of this is needed for us. If I don't feed my spirit, my spirit becomes weak. And if my spirit is weak, what will happen? Easily I'll fall into temptation. Very easy. Then we'll feel sad. Oh, I fell into temptation. But God is saying, hey, feed your spirit so that you can overcome the temptations. If your spirit is not strong, you fall into temptation very easily. Right? The word here used is renewed which is 
continuously changing, continuously being renewed, right? Renew. So the so Paul is saying here, being renewed in the knowledge. Every one of us know the gospel. Yes, no. Jesus died on the cross. He rose again from the dead. If you believe in him, we have forgiveness of sins, life everlasting. We will live with him forever and ever. Amen. Gospel. But that's not what. Uh, that's not enough. Yes, that that's the truth. That's the scripture. There's power of the gospel. But Paul is saying, you be renewed. You got to go back to the word. Got to go back to the things of God. Go back to sitting in His presence, praying, seeking His face. What will happen? All these old things that was there before we were believers, old thinking, old ways of living, everything will start going away. Example: If somebody, is, you know, a, a, a person who was, you know, living a very uh, sinful life always getting angry and shouting now, after becoming believer immediately he doesn't change right his spirit is new oh the lord jesus has saved me i believe in jesus but if something happens at home he still gets angry why because it's a natural it's a it's a natural thing for 10 years he's been getting angry so still even now he gets angry but the more he spends time in god's presence the more he prays and says, God, remove this anger. Anger is not from you. Help me to be patient. Help me to be kind. Help me to love one another. Be patient with one another. Help me to, whenever I get angry, remind me not to get angry. Help me to control my words, control my emotions. What's happening? You're feeding your spirit. So uh, see, a time will come when you really get angry, but the Holy Spirit will say, don't say anything. I'm with you. What is that? Suddenly, people will notice and say, hey, this person used to get angry every time. Now he doesn't get angry at all. Something has changed in him. What has changed? We've been feeding our spirit with the word of God. We've been feeding our spirit with the Holy Spirit's thoughts, Holy Spirit's actions and things of God. Always remember, my, one of my teachers used to say this, Gigo, G-I-G-O, right? We, we used to wonder, what is that? Gigo means garbage in, garbage out. You understand that? If, if you keep watching garbage and thinking of garbage, garbage only will come out. No good things will come out. What you feed in your mind, in your spirit, is what will come out. Feed the things of God, and the things of God will come out. Amen? Right, so Colossians three ten the other uh, the, uh, the other translation says for you have acquired new creation life, which is continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you, giving you the full revelation of God. The one you have acquired new creation life which is continually being renewed. So none of us can say, okay, I know everything. Right? You say, I know about the gospel. You know, good, learn it again. I know about Moses, good, learn it again. I know about Apostle Paul, good, learn it again. Why? Because it is a renewing process. Renewing process. You know, some of these subjects we've been teaching for 15 years, I've been teaching it. But still I go back, I still make notes. Why? Every time we do, every time we prepare, there's a renewing happening inside our spirit. There's something God can speak to us. God can use anything, right, and speak to us. So never come to a place where you say, I know everything. If you come to that place, there's nothing more we can do. You should always be hungry for God's word. Remember the Apostle Paul, in his last letter to Timothy, he says, Timothy, I want to know God. I want to know his grace, to know his love. 
Paul, you are telling this. You already know about Jesus. You have seen him. You have written all these great revelations of God. You are saying, I want to know him. You already know him. But Paul is saying, no, I want to know more of him, more of his will, more of his understanding, more of his presence. That should be our desire. We never come to a place of dormancy saying, I know. But you come to a place where saying, God, I want to know more. Right? We have become new creations in our spirit. We have a new creation life. But our spirit must continually grow. Our spirit must continually feed on God's word. Grow in wisdom, in knowledge, in revelation, and the things of God. So we can take a simple passage from the scripture. Right? Try this. Go back. Make a decision. Say, for example, you want to read one proverb chapters, one, one chapter of Proverbs every day. It's a very good habit. One chapter of Proverbs every day. Read the chapter and ask God to speak to you. Say, God, speak to me. Give me something that I can hold on to. Right? Proverbs is filled with wisdom. So God, give me one thing that I can hold on to. Now, it's not like heaven will open and Jesus will come and say, this is what you should do. No. But you know in your spirit, okay, God is ministering to me. He's telling me to live in, you know, in love, live in peace with one another. So I will do my best to do that. What are we doing? We're feeding our spirit. Right? So this is a test. This is our responsibility. If I don't do it, and if you don't do it for yourself, it's like if we are neglecting our body, we must not neglect our spirit. Right? We don't neglect our body. Same way, we must not neglect our spirit. Right? So all of you have come here to study, to learn. Just dive into God's word. Spend more time in God's presence. The goal of this study is that you and I be filled with his spirit. If I, I know some of you, Hindi or English may be a challenge right now, but take it up as a challenge. We are not going to teach in Hindi, that's for sure. So, okay, God, I'm going to learn English. Help me to grow. Help me to understand. Help me to learn what, what is being taught. Help me to apply it in my life. Help my spirit to grow in the things of God. The responsibility is... All right, so we'll close for today. Uh, there's a question here. Gertrude is asking, is it scriptural about our identity in the spiritual realm? Yeah, so the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that we are seated with him in the spiritual realm, meaning we are blessed with every blessing. So, uh, Gertrude, our identity is, again, righteousness, justification, justified, sanctified, holy, in the spiritual realm, that's what we are. So Ephesians 1, 1, 2, and 3 talks about it. So you can read the entire passage. Thank you, Bye. Pastor. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's just uh, quickly say a word of prayer and we'll close. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word and thank you for ministering to us, Lord. Lord, this is our heart's desire that each one of us, Lord, that we will grow in your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, and the will of God. Pray, God, that we will feed our spirit with the things of God, that we'll be strong, and we will know, Lord, that you are there with us. Thank you for this identity that you have given us, Lord, as, as children of God. We will walk in this identity, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit in us that is empowering us to fulfill what you want us to do, Lord. We speak a blessing over each and every student, Lord. Even as they study here, Lord, they're feeding their spirit. I pray, God, that they will, you will use them greatly for your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, thank you, everyone. God bless. Have a wonderful day.